Welcome to another episode of Trash Talk Podcast. JJ in the house, me in the house. Uh, as you know, that next week we we're gonna have Sergey back talking about Life is Strange Before the Storm because he's gonna finish that game by playing the farewell episode uh, in the upcoming week, and then we'll talk about that with him. But today um, we have a bunch of debates for you, uh, and we're gonna start off with some uh, interesting social debate topics. Yes. Um, a lot of the we have a lot of questions here that are uh, vaguely politically inspired. A lot of the the you know uh, political questions that people debate themselves with. Uh, in the modern days, the current era, and then we're going to try to answer some of those. In uh, some of those are opinion based, some of them not so much, uh, but people still have opinions about them. I was about to say, by nature of them being questions intended for debate, there is no consensus on the answers necessarily. Right. Otherwise, there would be no yeah. reason to discuss them. Then again, some of them we can answer. People do discuss. Some of them that I know that obvious. we'll be answered, be able to answer pretty quickly. Some of them I know that will take a bit. So yes. Let's get right into the top, JJ. What kind of questions do we have? Just well, the first question on this list that we pulled up from the internet, mm. <laughs> that, that that's enough credit, right? Shall we? Yeah. Um, is, uh, well, the, the debate topic is abortion should be available to all women. I mean, the question would then be, should yeah. abortion be uh, Well, the preface, obviously, to that is, is abortion a morally acceptable and if we can agree on that it is then yes it should be available why should it not uh however is it morally acceptable i don't know that's one of the topics that i famously uh, yeah. have refused to form an opinion on so far We've talked uh, about because before, I believe. a lot of people have a lot of radical views on that uh both sides in this case specifically more than most other topics uh and both of them are founded in nonsense basically uh, with the pro-life argument being founded in mostly religious stuff, and the pro-choice argument being, well, oh yeah, I can do whatever I want to simplify that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain to you why I don't. I don't have an opinion on this. Is because, or I, I, I don't have a, um, a, uh, a view kind of I did judgment on this. So, I think we've talked about this before. But at what point you you, know, you need to find a threshold? from which abortion is okay and no longer okay. Because we can all agree on that uh, a kid, like a day before birth, it's not it's not moral to abort that, which means just killing it, right? Uh, yes. But we can also agree that a, like a single cell, like a millisecond after conception, uh, does not have moral value. Yes. So that would be fine to abort or get rid of. Yeah. So uh, can you define a threshold, an exact point where... Uh, that non-moral thing turns into a that non-moral uh, harboring thing turns into a moral harboring thing, and thereby is from that point onward no longer acceptable to be terminated. I, mean, I can't. Abortion is legal in a lot of places. As a matter of fact, uh, most places in the modern yeah. world uh, do allow it up Some, until a certain time frame, which yeah. is. I don't know how that is set. Defined differently in different places. I assume there's some kind of reasoning behind mm, yeah. time frames that they do choose. I know that they do vary from place to place, mm -hmm. which means that there's clearly no consensus on where the line would in fact be drawn. Now, that, of course, again, as you said, brings up the question, where do you draw the line? I guess you could argue something like the brain being fully formed or something, because then it basically is a human being. You, but then you could basically. also then you could also argue... Uh, the first neuron being formed, because then we have a nervous system. Yes, and again, that's where it becomes difficult. But I think as much as it maybe isn't that easy to necessarily for us right now to determine the exact line, I think, as you said, we can agree that there is definitely a point where it would be acceptable. Yeah, and and there's definitely a point where it would not be. Yeah. So if we, so I can't say if abortion should be legal or not. Because I simply don't know, I, I can't set a perimeter for that. Uh, but if if someone were to say that it is, that it should be legal, then thereby would fall that it should be available, because it's a medical practice. Yeah, of, of course. Uh, I mean, availability yeah. for this, for legal abortion, should hopefully yeah. not be an issue. Um, legality in the first place, I am generally for it, um, because I'm also generally for well, you know, people having the choice to do stuff like that. The thing is, and this is once again a difficult topic, because at the end of the day, that usually depends entirely on what the mother wants. 
I... I'm going to completely abstain, by the way. I, I don't have an opinion. Yeah, no, I... I kind of... I don't of, think it's... I don't think it's right to, to have an opinion, because neither side is... Yeah. Well, I correct. I feel like it's always difficult that the mother alone gets to decide those things. That's enough. I understand how it's a lot harder to implement a sensible implementation where the father also yeah, has a say in it. That's that's tough to do. Especially because the earlier in the pregnancy, the harder it is to actually mm-hmm. definitively determine the father, um, be, which you would have to be able to do to have any kind of legal basis. Um, tough stop. Because otherwise the mother could just be like, no, I slept with another guy in the time frame and he certainly is the father. And then yada, yada, yada. So yeah, tough, um, tough topic. But generally speaking, I would say that women should be able to abort their pregnancies um, because I think also think that unwanted children are not necessarily great for any party involved. Okay, see, I'm, I could now obviously take the contrary stance and draw this into a long debate. Uh, I'm not going to do that, though, because we have a bunch of other points to, yes. to get to, but uh, if any of those that we mentioned, by the way, particularly interests you for some reason, uh, we can turn that into a longer topic. Yeah, um, we do have a comment section below on YouTube. We also have a Discord server. Uh, there might be a banner now convenient flag somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, Maybe. <laughs> yeah. No, some no, no. at some point. But let's uh, let's from the next two questions into one. Or yeah. You, I'll, I'll, want to say something important. I'll, I was just gonna say that anything that we discuss, if you either want to bring up a new argument that we don't talk about, or just want us to elaborate more. Uh, we're always appreciating this feedback, and especially for podcasts, we always yeah. appreciate suggestions as well. Exactly. So the next two, we're going to draw it together. Should human cloning be legalized? Should genetic engineering be legal? So cloning, genetic engineering, <laughs> this is a... Boy, this is such a I, I see how they're connected, but there's definitely two somewhat separate topics. I think, first of all, I guess let's start with... I think no one should be... Able to be cloned without their permission. Oh, of course, yeah. Because otherwise you're running into other moral issues where, like, you're cloning someone to have the clone, into, uh, like, pretend to be them for whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and while imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, uh, n- no, not that far. Word has it. So this is also one that I, God forbid I form an opinion on this one. I don't know. I don't even know the first thing about... Uh, morally arguing in that direction. Yeah. I don't see a path to where it should be morally uh, rejected, but that's mm-hmm. all because I don't have any no in the matter. Uh, so, so I'm not going to make an opinion on that. Genetic one. engineering, I think we've talked about this before as well. Yeah. Um, first of all, genetic engineering, in this case, is... I asked as a general question, which case mm-hmm. the answer definitely is yes. The question I think that we're getting into right now is genetic engineering on humans. Yeah, because I'm I'm all for like genetic engineered plants and animals for optimal yeah. foodstuffs. Um, animals, it's a bit more specific because you have to also get into the implications of how that <laughs> was about to say, make the animal feel. You know, yeah. Uh, the best you, genetic engineering obviously would be growing meat uh, in the lab yes, because uh, that that does not damage the environment exactly. the way that a regular uh, um, animal agriculture does. Of course, modifying animals to produce the best amounts of meat is not necessarily ethical if that means that that animal will have a tortured life. Um, Consuming well, animals for their meat generally isn't ethical. Well, yes. That's uh, that's, uh, that's the whole other th- thing. That would it. make it worse, of course. Um, yeah. Which, but again, we've been doing like crossbreeding and stuff like that all yes. along. We're talking about genetic engineering in the lab. Exactly. Um, because that's what I was going to bring up next. We've already bred some species into oblivion anyways. Yeah. Uh, just look at some of those horrible creatures that they sell for some reason called dogs. Yeah. Uh, I'm not... Just to be clear, <laughs> I'm talking about individual species of yeah. dogs. Dogs as a whole are great. Dogs are fantastic, but some of them... Um, but, you know, the whole squished faces of pugs, they don't like that. Yeah. It doesn't feel great for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and other stuff like that. Uh, you know. That, you know. Yeah. Um, human cloning. How about that one? Human cloning. I don't see the issue if the person that is being cloned is okay with it. See, I also don't. But I also don't have, again, I don't have the first clue about any what any of this would entail uh, on the whole spectrum, the legal the legal sphere and all that stuff. I don't even... Genetic engineering on humans has the issue, I believe you talked about that 
as well when taken to the extreme would lead to potentially only like a few different humans basically existing yeah. that are see the thing is of a common theme. if it if it serves like progress in terms of science and healthcare and all that stuff uh and there's no more uh object objection to it sure let's do it that's the thing right i would argue that like, you, like stem cell research if you have a genetic stuff. disposition that makes you more likely to contract cancer for example mm-hmm. which does exist uh then i would argue it is very reasonable to adjust your genetic code before yeah. birth so as to remove that disposition. Yeah. Same thing for other disabilities. Why have someone be born with them if we can avoid it? That in and of itself doesn't seem problematic at all. Yeah. But then there's other stuff like, oh, hey, here's this gene that gives you the tendency to be below average height. Yeah. That could be considered a disadvantage. Or let's breed a race of obedient clowns. Like, yep. let's make let's ke- yeah. let's make people's IQ not too high, and let's make their the, whatever gene makes people question authority more than average. You know, the thing is, stuff like that. If it falls into wrong in the wrong hands, bad idea. If if it falls in the right hands, pretty good idea. Yeah. So that's all we can say about the, that. The problem there is that I know for a fact that we as humans will understand where we can tweak the genetic code to make to create more. D- uh, desirable results mm-hmm. before we understand all of the consequences of doing yeah. it and we will ruin our entire species with genetic engineering given the chance yeah because we always have to understand a scientific concept <laughs> and then try to employ it right away uh, and it doesn't always go well <laughs> exactly so uh let's get into the next yeah. one man this is we've been dragging this out for a while uh the government should provide free birth control no why not not necessarily. Okay, I, mm, it's tough. I'm, I'm generally one for uh, free healthcare sort of stuff. Yeah, and, I guess. Uh, and all that. So generally, if like the government should provide, yes, the government should provide more stuff to people in general all the time for everything because they don't do that enough. I definitely think birth control should always be accessible. It's on the accessible. back end. It's, it's, on the, it's on the back end because it's very much a luxury item. No one requires it. Exactly. So, so that's, that's the thing, right? I think... It should be uh, just like anything that's medication and related. It should definitely be made affordable, at the very least. If anything, if everything else that is more important than that is completely taken care yeah, of, exactly. and we still have money to spend, sure, why not? It's a luxury item. But there's basically every every necess- necessary medication, uh, everything that is necessary for healthcare, that the lack of which would uh, decrease. The, the, the level of well-being for a person afflicted with whatever, uh, then that has priority over something yes. like birth control. But I do think that birth control should be widely available and at reasonable rates at the very least because there is... I feel like there's nothing worse than when people don't have access to that and even are also worse not, are, are poorly are, educated on it. Yeah, are also not educated on, on the... Exactly. And that leads to the problem that I... I mean, um, I think in certain more conservative areas of the United States, for example, that is the case where the education is just very bad in that regard. And that leads to people with lower education, of course, in particular, having more children, which is... It also leads to all of Africa dying of AIDS, right? Yeah. Now. That's, that's also a huge issue, right? So Not great. I don't like the idea that someone of lower education and thereby presumably mm-hmm. lower income later on makes more children, which, first of all, strains their limited resources more, and presumably leads their children to also yeah. be in the lower brackets, thereby lower education, you know. Um, I'm not saying that only the social elite should have children. I'm saying that you should only have children if you can afford to have children, though. Okay. And that is a legitimate concern. That That's another point. Children that are can, That's another point that we could debate at this point. But let's get into the next one, because yes. we wanted to cover a bunch of them. Companies should be required to hire fifty percent male and fifty percent female employees. Now, here's the, the no. we're gonna we're gonna look at this from the basis of the current system, right? The current capitalist economy economic system, um, and we're gonna disregard whether we agree or disagree with that system. Within that system, obviously not. Co- companies should hire the best quality workers available, uh, and they will do that. By the way, which is also the one reason that the whole idea about wage gap is not correct um yes. a wage gap in this economy cannot exist cannot exist in the capitalist economy that's one of the like two things 
that are good about capitalism, basically. Um, well, the a big thing that does drive the small wage gap that does exist is the fact that um, men are more likely to ask for a raise yeah. than women. And because a certain degree of job satisfaction is wanted by the employer to keep their employees... Men are statistically more likely to pull extra hours, night shifts, yeah, that sort of they stuff. They will be granted more likely. <clears throat> um, but, but here's in, the thing. In perspective, uh, a wage gap in the same job will not exist because if it were to exist in an institutionalized fashion, yeah. guess what? That company would hire 100% uh, female workers. If well, they the, were the one, the, the group that's underpaid. In this, yeah. in this, in this case, case, allegedly course, females, females, which is not true, by the way. Um, so here's the thing. Should they hire exactly 50-50? Hell no. no. Should they hire indiscriminately? Yes. Yeah. Hire um, best work available. But that's the thing, right? I hate the whole forced mm-hmm. percentages of certain groups. Yeah. Because why? Be- that is literally what they what they're trying to avoid by introducing it, which is discrimination. Yeah. Which is operating or hiring by guidelines that are that are presented because to them. Especially that. the way the question here is worded. That's a hard limit. So you're saying mm-hmm. that if, you know, uh Jim and HR he quits. Yeah. I don't know why I just picked that random example. And then there is like say there's ten applicants. Yeah. One of which is a woman. Yeah. Uh wait, no no. One of which is a guy, none of which yeah. are women. That that's way. Yeah, we uh, have to hire the guy. To keep the You have to hire the guy. Yeah, to keep the percentage up. It doesn't matter if he's not qualified yeah, enough. That's terrible. No. Oh. So you that's, have to hire him. Yeah, so to that's, keep, keep that's the quota. not very efficient. Also And even if there is a little bit of, of uh, leeway where it's like, oh yeah, at least thirty percent of each. <clears throat> That's yeah. you know, it's more reasonable, but it's still bullshit. None of those quotas point, are a good idea. Yeah, because, because if you yeah. have a quota, you have to hire less qualified people potentially to fill the quota. Also, take it to the extreme. Uh, we do that for gender, why not for race? Do I have to hire twelve percent black? Do I have to hire one and a half percent gay? Do I have to hire uh what six percent Asian? Like to do I basically have to exactly. Replicate, replicate the, the population, population yeah. as like an index uh, in my company obviously not that's ridiculous so a clear no to this one I guess yes uh, a clear no Barbie is a good role model for young girls Barbie no. is a toy also um, this has been discussed to death by people uh, it's like getting more Superman invested in the issue it? but um, the proportions of a Barbie doll are literally yeah. unattainable by a human without yeah. severe surgery yeah and even then, not necessarily very realistic. Also crazy, crazy anorexic. Well, yes, that's... So, like, from a purely um, appearance-wise standpoint, obviously not. Like, behaviorally, again, it's a toy. I mean, it's, 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 inanimate, a, it's, a, it's a doll. She's, she's a doll, and she comes with all kinds of outfits yeah. and implications. You see, like, the Batman dolls, the Superman dolls, man, the Incredible Hulks? <laughs> they look like the most jacked-up, crazy <laughs> roid heads of all time. You want, you want that to be a role model? Obviously not. They're toys. They're, no, they're yeah. over-exaggerated. All of them are. So none of those should be to- to- role models. But obviously no. No. Um, Burning the flag should be illegal. No. Okay. Okay. Okay, this one, right? Why first the fuck all, do you care so much about an object? First of all, I'm 99% certain that, that question was written by an American. Mm, yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure. As a matter of fact, yes, American. Most people don't give to Because much. those are the people that most glorify their flag. Yeah. Um, and second of all, no, uh, burning an object, specifically one that you have, yeah, it's that my you legally thing. possess, it's that's my shit, definitely dude. important there, um, y- you're not going to take a flag off a building and burn it, in that mm-hmm. case that's, um, you're destroying someone else's property, that's of course Assigning okay. inherent value to an object just because that object symbolizes something to a specific group or specific person is insanity. Now, I understand that it should probably be illegal to burn the Mona Lisa. Yes. I meh, No. Um, if you were to legally purchase it... Okay, I, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I think there is... There is um, there is actually laws in place that... that, that um, are specifically for that sort yeah, of I mean, case. Because I underst- there was a case once where people bought really expensive paintings and then scribbled over them and all that. I think... As much as people like the whole idea of, like, keeping, like, that stuff intact for historical reasons, mm-hmm. I think that if you own it, you can do with it whatever the fuck you want unless you're hurting yeah. someone else. There's something about, you know, disturbing the social order with, you know, the care. iconic value stuff, but I literally just don't any care. given flag? I don't give a shit, no. What else do we have? The death penalty should be abolished, yeah. 
Yes. Uh, three years ago, Probably. I like uh, seven years ago, I was like, I don't care. Like three years ago, I was like, I don't know. Now I'm yeah. Uh, the more I I know and learn about this, the more I say yes. It's actually a bit of a difficult question, but I feel like the moral implications. We, we talked about this before. The, the death penalty fundamentally uh, builds on eye for an eye, uh, which is just yes. that's just literally just a Bible quote. Uh, there is no, there is no reasonable justification for a death penalty. You're punishing uh, a murder with murder, and also it's a penalty that cannot be retracted. Yeah, uh, the the p- point of not being able to retract is definitely a big one. Another issue I think is that a lot of people misunderstand uh, the punishment of the legal system because they see it as such. It's not, a, it's not. The legal system does not attempt to punish people necessarily. Well, at least it shouldn't. Private prisons. Um, yeah, that's a whole other mm-hmm. kerfuffle. Um, but instead, the tar- the goal should be, well, to some degree, the population, uh, the protection of your population. Yeah. So the people that are too dangerous to operate within normal social environments should, of course, not be there. But also, in a big part, rehabilitation. Yeah. And um, that is, of course, once again. And uh, spoilers. Dead people cannot be rehabilitated yeah. into society. Um, and I, I see how there are certain crimes where you would think that a person that committed them probably cannot be rehabilitated. Sure. But that doesn't mean that you should kill them outright. No. I Never do justified. still believe there's theoretically some upsides to the death penalty. Mm-hmm. But the problem is that the downsides that we just outlined the uh, can never mm-hmm. really yeah. be counteracted by those obstacles. Not justifiable to me uh, about Yeah, the one the one advantage is cost, but that's like, ugh. Drug use should be treated as a mental health issue rather than a criminal offense. To a yes. definite degree, sure. Um, now, addiction is, we, we know that addiction is disease, yes. so that, that should be treated for sure. Everyone should be able to walk into a hospital and be like, okay, uh, this and this, this, I'm addicted to this and this substance without fearing legal persecution. Yes. Uh, obviously. Um. The then on the other flip side, of course, you have like distributors, like dealers, and all that stuff. Well, right? yeah, so that, that's, that's a whole that's a whole different idea. So generally, generally, the, yes. They asked about use, and I feel like, um, I also, I also think that the whole huh, the dealer thing is a whole another issue. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I don't see why. We should criminalize the use of drugs. I don't necessarily see why we should criminalize the possession of drugs in an amount that is clearly only for personal use. Um, but yeah, of course, uh, distribution is a whole different issue. So uh, it, it also depends on the type of drug, to a degree, obviously. Yeah, of course. Um, but society is very backwards on that sort of stuff anyway, and making any judgment within the system that's within the current set parameters is basically always hypocritical because yes. it doesn't, the, the whole thing doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, generally do that. If anyone is does not seek help for drug addiction because of the fear of legal repercussion, uh, that is inefficient and not, uh, not an optimal standpoint. Yeah, that's definitely a flaw in the system. Then. Yeah. Uh, euthanasia should be legal. Sure. Yes. Uh, um like get a psychiatric evaluation is 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 the person completely yes. sane uh is the is the person completely able to make their own decision sure you should be able uh <laughs> yeah you should be able to um <sighs> die if, yeah. if necessary I sure if, if desired sure um it i always feel it's a bit almost i don't, I don't want to say wasteful but wasteful if someone were to like decide like oh yeah you know I'm I'm not feeling the yeah. whole life thing and I just want to die, but like I definitely see it in a lot of those cases where someone is clearly in a lot of pain they they have like yeah. some kind of medical condition, and that's like that's the whole in thing a lot like of, in a lot of terminal countries. cancer it's yeah. like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna die I'm gonna anyway die within a few like, months yeah might but as well right until now. then I'm gonna be in a lot of I, pain I can't do anything during yeah. that time why sit around the hospital exactly so, um. I this is insti- this is already instituted in a lot of country in some yes. countries by the way uh, mainly um, uh, Western European countries like the Netherlands and Belgium are very liberal Actually, on that sort of stuff. Actually, um, the federal law in the United States does not entirely prevent it at the very least. Okay. Um, it is, however, like uh, regulated on state level. Yeah, that's because what I it is legal in DC. 
No, that's interesting. Which only has federal law. They don't have any state level. Uh, Is feminism irrelevant in the 21st century? Depends on where. Uh, First world, yes. Third world, no. Feminism. It's relevant. It's relevant wherever there's still actual oppression of women going on, like for example the Middle East, Asia, Africa, and so on and so on. In the United States and Western Europe, for all intents and purposes, no feminism is not relevant. Feminism also is not equal to feminism necessarily. Yeah. A lot of the more modern inclinations there are not for equality, which is what the whole yeah. concept originally was about. Um, equality, of course, is a concept that should always kind of be implemented and be uh, strive you should always strive towards um that being said for the most part equality is existent there are definitely areas in which uh, women are disadvantaged there's areas in which men are disadvantaged both of those should not be a thing um both those again in very specific areas are um and in that regard it does make sense uh, for those movements to exist, but again, the most of people that call themselves feminists these days are not yeah. about what we're talking. So those about. Those, those don't give a shit about uh, the people that it would actually require some. Like for example, in Saudi Arabia or or th- those kinds of places, Africa, um, uh, China, th- where the you know the development society in that that regard is far far behind um, for all intents and purposes in the Western world. Negligible, not relevant. Feminism should focus more on men's rights. Is literally the next one. What? Um. Well. No. Well, feminism should focus uh, on what it's supposed to be. Feminism, women's rights, well, in fe- places where women don't have the exact same rights as men. Also, why the term feminism is something that mm, slightly bugs me. Uh, at the end of the day, you're talking about egalitarianism, egalitarianism, and you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, people should be equal. And um, that does involve men as well. There sure. is a few... I'm, I don't think there's anything... Well, actually, no, there is. Um, there is areas in which men are legally disadvantaged, but for the most part, it's more systematic. And mm-hmm. anything that is not inherently legally established is always a bit iffy. Um, See, in practice, there's never going to be... There's no, no such thing as absolute equality. Yeah. But that's because of the nature of the system. Uh but at the very least, I think men and women should be equal legally, yeah. which is where stuff like military drafts come into play, uh, which are one of the few sexist things that still exist within legal systems yeah. in the Western world, which actually disadvantage men. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but, you know. But again, you can look at that from both sides of the coin. There could be a man, a man who's like, it's unfair that I am more likely to have to go to war than, uh, than a woman. There could also be a woman who's like, it's unfair that it's harder for me to join the army than for a man. Well, yes. Um, but I think voluntarily joining is still possible for them while being drafted against their will is not. Yeah. It's Which sure. that whole thing, by the way, is a debate in and of itself. I don't yeah. think there should be anything, anything even closely approaching mandatory military yeah no right? I, I'm also insanity. against that categorically it's complete but, craziness but um, I, I think that's one of the few areas where inequality is still yeah. very much systematic but yeah feminism should not focus on either men or women in the developed world feminism should focus on the areas where women are treated like livestock which is not exactly the place where feminism is the loudest uh, these days yeah uh, gay marriage should be legalized. Sure, yes. why the fuck not? I, the, the one reason that people would argue it should not be is because blah, 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 the Bible says so. No, The Bible I... is not logic. No no religious text is based in logic, and um, there's no reason to... Yes. There's no logical reason I to also deny legal, gay marriage. I also hate the appeal to the Bible and Christianity for marriage because they're like, oh yeah, Marriage is a holy Christian institution. It's like, no, the concept of marriage predates Everything, Christianity. Yeah. It's like, the the way we do marriage these days has nothing to do with the original concept. Yeah. Let it was people way more about political connection than anything yeah, else. exactly. Uh, so if we allow matter. people to marry because they have feelings for someone, then why should we care what gender they are? Exactly. So uh, if, we, if we're getting into the uh, should... Uh, same-sex couples be allowed to adopt children. That's, That's actually the next question, I believe. Is it? That's a whole other kind of worms. Yeah, gay people should be... Wow, allowed to adopt children. Well, that's one that I can talk about for hours. Because I honestly am not very sure about this. Um, and here's the thing. It's not that I'm, oh, I'm denying, I'm denying rights. No, obviously not. Uh, it's not about It's not about that. It's about that there's statistical evidence for uh, children to... Uh, 
have to experience more problems uh, in a uh, the growing up in a household with same sex parents. So generally speaking, I think they should be allowed to do so. Yeah. Um. Again, the statistical problems exist, but you could make that argument about any kinds of groups, and that's where the issue comes in. And there is some degree of um, checking involved for adoption usually. If you're like capable of raising a child, kind of thing, yeah. which at least eliminates certain groups, like people that literally, as I said before, cannot afford to raise children, for example, uh, monetarily speaking, yeah, um, and some other issues there, Maybe but drug addicts, violent felons, whatever. But I would assume uh, that. But here's the one thing that I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say about okay. this: uh, legal, right now for sure. The thing is, at at any given time, a qualified. Uh, Homosexual couple as an adoption uh, is much is a much better environment still for a child to grow up than like jumping from foster home to foster home yes. uh, with all sorts of messed up other people throughout their entire childhood. So uh, that is generally preferable over that. Uh, given the assuming the the perfect situation were to exist where no child ever needs to be in foster homes again, uh, then we open that can up again and debate on. Whether um, if we have like the one kid left and there's a there's a gay couple and a and a straight couple, um, or two married couples, uh, which is statistically better for the kid to grow up in, and then we'll bring that whole argument up. Again. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure you can also, if you want to go to statistics, probably make an argument about race, about age. You can make all kinds of arguments. I mean, age to a degree is a valid argument, but you know that's the problem with statistical argumentation. Let's cover two more. Of those questions, yes. Uh, one that one that we will talk about a little bit, and one that I'm going to answer in 0.3 nanoseconds. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, and then we'll get into the halftime show. So, is graffiti art just as worthy of regard as classical paintings? Sure. Yes. Why um, wouldn't it? Um, I, th- I I would think it would. We gotta. I think we gotta establish a few things here. First, uh, one. First of all, we do not endorse people just spraying graffiti on random walls. Yeah. Um, but generally speaking, it is an art form just as painting is, and I don't see why it should be regarded differently if done in a reasonable manner. And that's the thing. If if someone just started painting in a classical style on yeah. a wall, that's still vandalism. Yeah, exactly. And um, same with the graffiti. Yeah, that's and if if you're buying a if you're buying a huge wooden board, putting it up in your room, and it, I don't care if you use uh, brushes or spray cans exactly. to draw nice stuff on there, it's, it should be regarded as nice art. That, that I was, I just wanted to establish, because sometimes people inherently associate graffiti with vandalism, and I just wanted to make sure that no one, you know, makes that mistake here, because graffiti as, like, a technique very much, yes, um, of course, vandalism, categorically, no. Yeah. And finally, healthcare should be universal yes, yes come at me in other news the pope should be catholic can we go to that <laughs> that's that's literally all i have to say C- come on now so <sighs> let's 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 do the halftime show that's enough we'll cut it there but yes. um if there's any interest or we'll we'll save that side i think and uh, maybe get back to that at some point because there's some interesting ones there and uh, potentially some more for us to discuss so let's hop into the halftime show, and you can see it on the screen right there. We have set up our tech game like a billion times. We got the, no more letter quizzes, and today we're doing P R N S. Now, where's Q? Q isn't there because there isn't a second quiz for Qs. Turns out they ran out of Q. I look for it. Um, happens. So it makes sense. Q is probably the yeah. hardest letter, I would argue. At this point, you should know how this works. Parrot that wanted a cracker, Polly. Yeah. And they're just typing, and you can see the misery. What That's the hell? Polly, you said. What the hell? P O L L O. Polly. Yeah. I thought, po- I thought you said Polly, isn't in... What? I, I don't know that bird. Victoria Beckham's spice name. Oh, she was one of the spice names. Yeah, girls. I think. Is posh correct? P O S H? As a very British, okay? Fair. Yeah. Demoted planet. <laughs> Pluto. Pluto, not a planet, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. Former English spelling of Beijing is Peking. Peking, like this? I yes. Think, yes. Great Russian Tsar, Peter. Wait, oh, it's probably... Oh, I, I, was, I was about to say it's probably the Russian spelling, but it's not. No, uh, spinach eating strongman. <laughs> <laughs> it's Popeye. I was about to say, I'm actually blacking right now. <laughs> uh, uh, Supercontinent of the Dinosaur Age. Uh, Pangea. Pangea. Uh, Author who remembered things past. 
uh, Marcel Proust. I gotta say, I've read the first volume or listened to the first volume of uh, uh, In Search of Lost Time. It's supposed to be like the greatest book ever. Ah, man, I could, I hate it. Can you give us some letters? Uh, Is it- O-U-S-T. Oh, you asked you. Okay. Man, that was that's that book is a drag and a half. I didn't get through it. Uh, his bells made dogs s- s- salivate. Yeah, Pavlov. Oh, <laughs> I was I didn't know what they were getting. Microchip at, that came after the four eight six. Damn, I'm I'm I relying on you to know. Feel that. Feel like that uh, falls into my yeah. Language. Wait, is it is it Intel? Is it is it uh, Pentium? Pentium. Nice. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Castor's twin brother. I've heard that before. Uh, you got an idea? Not right now. We'll, we'll get to it later. Egyptian writing materials, papyrus, milli, micro, nano, pico. Oh yeah. Longest type of snake, python. Word following may north or barb <laughs> pole. De fact, the leader of Russia since two thousand. Want to call Sergey for that one? <laughs> Type of flatbread, sometimes with pockets. Uh, pita, right? P I T A. It's like a, a yeah, I know what you're Southern saying. European thing. Disease scheduled to be eradicated by 2018. Oh, oh lord. Uh, the polio. Well, um, you know, pe- people are trying <laughs> to make it harder. Old blood and guts, general of World War Two. Patton. P A T T O N. O N. O N. So sorry, I'm. Atom. I uh, missed it there. <laughs> member of the House of Lords. The UK is not democratic. Peer. Region of the India-Pakistan border. Punjab. Great. Evil Emperor of Star Wars. I don't think that was that one too. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. German word for tank. Panzer. Yes, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> and you believe I it. always love when those happen. And yeah, Miss, yeah. Miss uh, Longstocking, Pippi. Oh, yeah. Who's Castor's twin brother? God damn it. Um, Are we really going to fail by one again? Th- that, that's that's uh, a Roman thing, right? Is, mm-hmm. is that what I'm thinking? Uh, so... I think, I think We're going to miss it by one again. I hate that. I think that's, that's so a, close. A, a, an ancient Rome thing, isn't it? Possible. I'm pretty sure I've heard it before. But then again, you know. We suck at this. Yeah, I suck at remembering things in general, which is um Dude. Okay, let's just let's just go with let's just see. I'm probably gonna hit myself Damn, in the man, head when I see one, it. By one. By one. Pollocks. Yeah, I've heard that before. Damn. He was so close. Okay, everyone knows Pluto. <laughs> Okay, forty percent actually knew Pollux, Okay, how? How? Okay, author Proust only fifteen percent. I guess people didn't uh, never heard of him. Didn't get the uh, like the description. Never because heard of, of In Search of Lost Time and that stuff. But to be fair, um, this time around, I didn't know that many. We got twenty three out of twenty four. No, I personally <laughs> okay, didn't yeah, know that many. fair enough. I I know Pluto, Popeye, Python, Putin, Papyrus. I probably would have gotten although. But... It's one that would have been would have been insi- no, instantly clear to me. I could have probably gotten Peter and Polio, <clears throat> um, Peking, of yeah. course. Pavlov, I actually had a really hard time Pole, you with what they were trying Pole. to get at. A Pangea, of course. Yeah. Panzer, Palpatine, yeah. Pentium is the one I mm-hmm. got. Pico, Pugia, probably Punjab, also. and that would have been it. I mean, that's I mean, it's actually quite a lot. Yeah, now, I think no, not that bad. But we st- we did we missed it by one. Let's get into the next one. We got what we have. R. <laughs> Let's win something. Come on. Ooh, I know what the first one is. Type of person's dome. What is that? That's a ruby. Fairy tale character with very long hair. That's Rapunzel. Yep. CJ knows this stuff. Uh, board game of world domination. Oh, oh, there's risk. I for a second I thought we were at P and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Tallest type of tree. Tallest type of tree. That would be a redwood. Yes. Last book of the Bible. Revelations. Oh, man, did you know everything? Uh, volcano near Seattle. I don't know. That. R-A-I-N-I-E-R. N-I-E-R. ADHD, Rainier. Yeah, ADHD medication. I'm blanking, but I've probably heard it before. Ritalin. 
Yeah, I've heard, I've heard of that before. Yes. Country singer McIntyre. Reba. R-E-B-A. Uh, famous Oxford scholarship. Rhodes. With an H after the R. After the R. R-H. Yeah, I, I bet I'm listening like to Like the name Rhodes or yeah, the place yeah. Rhodes. Um, Swiss, Swiss luxury, luxury watch brand. brand Rolex. Mm. Fleetwood Mac's best-selling album. We know Fleetwood Mac. Yes, it's probably the one that has all the Fleetwood Mac songs yeah. that I had, like on it. Like rumors. Oh, rumors! Right, the only one that comes to mind, actually. Yeah, no, that's uh, Latin for king or a common name for a dog. Rex. <laughs> uh, earthquake measurement scale. Richter. I was about to say I've heard yeah. it before. What the Richter. hell? Is it not? No, 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 no. R-I-C-H. R-I-C-H. T-E-R. T-E-R. Oh. Uh, oh, first, R- Richter. Yeah, okay, yeah. First blood protagonist. How do you not know that? Rambo. Huh. Light sensitive inner layer of the eye. Uh, that would probably be the retina. Yeah. Currency of Russia. That would be a ruble. Yeah. Brightest star in the Orion constellation. Uh, is that the North Star? No, no it's no, not the Orion constellation. It's, it's uh, Regal. All right. R I G E L. Right. Oh, that yeah. yeah. No, I've I've heard of that before. Type of dueling sword or wit. Rapier, I suppose. Yeah. Term for a language that evolved from Latin. A uh, romance, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Prominent Mormon politician. <laughs> what? He ran for president once in 2012. 2012. Who ran for president in 2012? Obama did. It's Mitt Romney. Oh. French for red. Uh, rouge? Rouge. R- rouge? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. Female riv- riveter of World War Two. Rosie. Right. It was blank for a split second. Uh, Mr. Crusoe. Robinson. Robinson. Currently yeah. on that book. Pretty interesting. Where Amy Winehouse didn't want to go. No, no, no. Uh, music that is a bit too contemporary for us, I believe. Um, do you know the answer to that one? Though? I th- think so. Because I don't think I do. Rehab. As in rehabilitation. Let's go! I mean, I believe she did. Let's go! I believe she did die of a drug overdose. Really? That makes so much sense, then. She, she's one of those uh, <laughs> celebrities that died really young. Like oh, yeah. Like Kurt Cobain? Yeah, sort of exactly. Uh, there, I th- think there's a list of celebrities that died under a certain age. Which Kurt Cobain and Amy Winehouse both are on. Okay, fair enough. Um, oh yeah, we got them all. Uh, the average score is 15. I didn't put it out last yeah. time what that was, but you saw it on screen. At least the one is that Regal. Didn't run potential. You don't know, people don't know their stars? Ah. I have heard of Regal before in the context of the Regal system being used in some kind of sci-fi series because yeah. they like using Mount Rainer also real stars and then just, known. you know, the planets are like, Regal 1, <laughs> okay. Regal 2, Regal 3. How do 40% of the people know Mitt Romney? <laughs> Can someone explain that to me? He ran for president like seven years ago. I didn't know he was Mormon. Fair enough. Rambo Rhodes. Okay, yeah. Was... Like the name, like everyone's heard of Rambo. Yeah. But fuck, do I know that the movie's called really? First Blood. I don't like those types of action movies. 57% Ritalin is also kind of tough. That's questionable, yes. Um... That should have been more yeah. commonly known. Some some of those are a little bit low, I, I feel like. Um, those, yes. Yeah. I guess 52% <laughs> of people have never gotten that Oxford scholarship. It's terrible. How stupid. Let's get into the next one. <laughs> the next and last one. S. Um, National Sport of Japan, judging by the picture, it's sumo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some fonts are sans. These are <laughs> serif. Uh, yeah, Jacob Marley's partner. Is, are you just giving me a pause so they can say it? Or no, you also. No, I'm, I'm, I'm killing myself over not knowing that. Extremely expensive red spice. Saffron. <sighs> Double, Double F. F. Yeah. Served with jam at tea time. Uh, what does that shit call? <sighs> Sounds British, yeah. but in fact, you're saying tea time, which. Uh, Makes me instantly not know it anyways. God damn. Chinese Buddhist monastery known for martial arts prowess. 
uh, Shaolin. Oh, yeah. Uh, is it Shaolin? O-L-I-N. Like that? Yeah. yeah. No, the, the O-Lin part... The Col- Lin part was clear, but yeah. Color of Hester, Priny's letters. Who? Scarlet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I sh- you know what? <laughs> what? Had they not asked for Hester Prine and they just said color... I would have probably gotten <laughs> yeah. it. It's silver and scarlet. What other? Yeah, colors? exactly. Okay. Uh, syndrome where hostages befriend their captors. Stockholm. Dialect of Liverpool. What's that called? Scouse or something? S C O U S E. Yeah. Brand of racing swimwear. <laughs> Speedo. Oh, that's a brand. Yeah. Didn't know that. Personal assistant on your iPhone. Siri. Yeah. Personal surveillance device. Computer that builds Terminators. Um, 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 why am I blanking so hard right now? I know that. I know that. You know that. I know that. Yeah, you know that. Probably super Skynet. something. Skynet. Fair enough. Uh, I knew fa- that. Faster than the sp- I didn't know that. Faster than the speed of sound. Well, Sonic would be the speed of sound, yeah, right? Yeah, so it's super Super Sonic. Sonic. Yeah. <laughs> Peninsula that Israel returned to Egypt for some reason. Uh, Sinai. S I A hey, spelled right. Well, it's very clear from the pronunciation yeah, spelled. Enough. Germanic tribe neighbors to the Angles. The Saxon. Saxon. Uh Hindu destroyer god. Uh that I also know it's Shiva. Yeah. Marine mammal or R and B singer. <laughs> M- Marine mammal. <laughs> uh <laughs> Okay. Let's see what mammals uh, live in water whose names start with S. Do you know the answer yeah. to that? Or did you just tell me? Yeah. Seal. Oh, right. <laughs> Isn't he spelled with a Z? I don't know. The guy? I don't think so. No, no, no. Uh, no. And also it would be Zeal, which yeah. is a whole different thing. Exactly. No, Ethnic like... group that encompasses Russians, Poles, Croats, and many others. Uh, Slav. Slav, yeah. That makes sense. Island chain north of Scotland, known for ponies. Uh, Shetland. Shetland. One T, two T's. I One T. The game where zoo, za, and ki are common words. Oh, dude, that took me way too long to get. <laughs> Scrabble. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. I, that, that, that's, two that's, letter that, words, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. That's that's a way to ditch all those the Q's The car is its capital. Um, uh, Senegal. Yeah, Senegal. Uh, brother of a K- uh, kind of uh, Seth, Bible thing. Uh, Brazilian. I didn't know that they had a brother. I just know that Cain killed Abel. Mm-hmm. By the way, he's way worse than Hitler, Stalin, and Mao because he killed twenty five percent of the world's population. <laughs> just saying. Uh, Brazilian. Wait, Af- they, they had a brother. Okay, per- did, probably, probably after. Double like, like, Probably way later. Yeah. After Brazilian F one champion who died in the crash, uh, Senna. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him before. In yes. New Zealand, they outnumber people 10 to 1. <laughs> that's a good one. Fuck <laughs> sake. That's always funny. Yeah. Uh, wait, in New Zealand? Yeah. Uh, I know there's places where it's sheep, but I don't think it's in New yeah, Zealand. Yeah, it's cheap. Is, is it there yeah, as well? Yeah, okay. okay, we're missing uh, two, though. We're terrible. Jacob Marley's partner and Sir of Jam at, at tea time. Well, I mean, I, I did my thing with knowing Terminator. I mean, that's, mm. that's really all that I can participate here. I knew mythology and um, and uh, pop culture. That's really all I'm here for. Take a modest part in someone that I'm going to be kicking myself over. I don't know. Let, let's go for some generic English first names like Scott or... Scott. Or... Sebastian. Sebastian. That seems very unlikely. That's not even how we spell it. Oh, man. That's how you spell it, but still. This is, a, this is a, the one that's fairly known. Scrooge. Scrooge. And a sco- Oh, scones! Fuck! We could have gotten scones. Yeah, we could have gotten both of those. What was, the, what was the one we missed for um P? We missed one there that... <sighs> scones, 70% of people. That's Oof, great. That's a rough... 46 one. Scrooge. Herds. Oh. 31 Skynet, at least no one. Mm, wow, and Shaolin. Interesting. I also didn't know Skynet, by the way, so... it's Thanks for saving me there. They've been used in... It's been used in memes before, like... Okay. Do you want to get Skynet? That's how I get Skynet. I can't remember. I've never heard of um, it. Sumo series speed, okay. I mean, Sumo, I think in big part because of the picture. Big picture, yeah. If you had just said National Sport of Japan, I wouldn't have instantly connected to Sumo. 
Still, though, makes sense. Yeah, no, it, it's a classical Japanese They also sport. play surprisingly much baseball. Fact. Yeah, I, I've heard of that before, yes. So, okay, that's... that's... Average score is 14, so a bit lower than, than usual. So that's that. I think. Doesn't justify that we mucked this up royally with both of those, but uh, we at least got one. We got the R. Is yes. that correct? Yeah, that's, that's just what we got. So let's hop into the fact of the week. The facts of the week. Jesse, what's the fact of the week? My fact of the week Word is... Word on the street has that both our facts relate to the same topic. Yes, they do, as far as I've heard as well. Uh, my fact is about Hearthstone, and I believe so is yours. Um... <laughs> This is not, like, a huge secret or anything, but it's rare enough that I think people might not have encountered really? it. I was certainly, uh, you know, surprised when I saw it. And that is, you know how we always talk about when we're playing the dollar on heist that we're getting to Bob? Yeah. Well, we don't necessarily actually go to Bob. Robert. There is also a robotic bartender that can replace him. Is there? Yes, you can encounter a robot bartender instead of Bob. I might have totally just now blanked on his name instead of writing it down somewhere. But, uh, yes, that is an option. And So that just happens very rarely? Yes. Randomly? Okay. And I believe he exclusively serves up mechs. Hmm. Although I cannot confirm that because I, ha- I haven't looked that up. I just know that the one time I did encounter him, all he served up was mechs. Yeah, Dr. Boom been cooking again. Yes. Coming up with all that. Other than that, it works the same way? Yes, okay. and the funny thing is, that. when I got him, um, I, who's it, Boom or Fan or someone, like, the, the villain of the chapter yeah. made the joke about, oh, you found yourself a human shield. It's like, no. No, no you're not human. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, they, they, they made a whole human reference, like, the one time that you're in a bar that is specifically run by a robot for robots. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like, oh, something, some, some human shield is like, me mother bartender is like, Oh, we really get we really get non robot visitors here. Hmm. Here's another fact about Hearthstone. Also, uh, I'm not sure if you knew this. Probably you did, but uh, I also ran into this on um, on accident. Is that in Arena you there is actually an option to disable golden cards? Yes, I have it on that. It's in the options menu, I believe. Yeah, once you have drafted your deck, you can then uh, choose to disable if you drafted golden cards them from being gold. I, I have heard of that before. I don't I don't see why you would necessarily. So do if that. you play, I, I assume so. If you play the same guy twice, then and you play the different copy of the card, they know you have another one. Maybe. That seems very unlikely. I think. I mean, I guess if at high win counts, you have other a than, decent chance of winning. Other than that, why does it matter? Like. There should be a reason for it. Um, well, I mean, theoretically, also through discovery effects that could happen, as you said, with that being a little bit of extra information. Um, I think it's just personal preference, probably. Maybe. I don't know. If anyone has more insight on that, let us know. But that Maybe is also to seem like more of a beginner, stuff. because I believe the golden cards that you draft are... You can only draft a card golden if you have it golden. Is that right? It sounds right. Is that a fact? I don't know. I want to say it is. Maybe. I should look into that. That sounds interesting. Because in that case, um, just like picking the classic card back to yeah. not give away that you have been playing forever. Yeah. Makes sense. You know. Makes sense. But that's also like yeah. minor optimization yeah. by employing psychology that mm. 99% mm. of opponents Barely won't even pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, it's not even that, that important. But that's your facts of the week, both about Hearthstone. Let us know if you knew those or not. Let's get into the second topic. And the second topic is about a future best-selling writer. Uh, forget Marcel Proust. Let's talk about JJ himself. Right there, this man, a uh, future best-selling writer. Um, when is your first book going to be published? Well, um, never probably, but I do... Te- technically, that's um, one item that I have on my bucket list is to publish a book. You publish a book, then? Yes. Um, so, n- I'm not necessarily saying that it's going to be a novel, which is the other thing. But um, I have tried my hand at writing before, uh, my creative writing. I and that's say. what we want to talk about. Um, yeah, I enjoy doing it. I haven't done it a lot lately, and I've never really been great at it. But I do it sometimes. You do. So it what sometimes. do you want to talk about? So you had attempt, had made several attempts at starting to write a book. Yes. And uh, the ones that you did attempt, I, I understand, were fictional novels. Yes. So what what was kind of the the, the first ideas and stuff that, that you were trying to make happen? I, well, two of my go-to, like, kind of, like, 
settings, framing devices, whatever you want to call it, are definitely... I like stuff that involves reality jumping and alternate realities. Right. Hard to pull off. Yeah. You, I see a lot of uh, shows and books and, you know, all the fictional media, well, all the media that you consume, uh, the fictional stories they're in, attempted and oftentimes it seems unsatisfying the way they do it i have never really uh, tried completely constructing very well thought out alternate realities especially in setting where the primary goal would be reality jumping uh, some long lines of sliders for example uh at, for like an actual ex- or existence story as a countermeasure it's tough what always kind of bugs me is that, um, and I know I'm getting a little off topic here, is that oftentimes when alternate realities are used in fiction, they for some reason still have the same characters existing within them okay. as like the main reality, yeah. except that they're in different roles now. And I get why it makes sense from a storytelling standpoint, but from a realism standpoint, it definitely doesn't work at all. You gotta come up with a lot of different characters then, though. Yeah, no. If you're, if you're I, conceptualizing new ones, every I, time. I get that. But um, if you're saying that this world is so fundamentally different in a way, but then you encounter the same characters, yeah, it seems strange. You know, the whole thing was like, oh yeah, and in this world, Germany won World War Two and we're under Nazi rule, but for some reason, all of our main protagonists still all exist. The same people, yeah. It's like fair enough. What? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Probably not. Superhero comics love doing that, and there is, as a matter of fact, at least in DC, I'm not sure if it's in Marvel, but probably as well, a reality where the Nazis won, and all of your favorite Justice League superheroes are Nazis. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, actually, in that in that reality, it's not direct counterparts of those characters, but characters with the same power sets that clearly form the same kind of team structure. It's weird. All right. So... And, and the other thing is um, generally high fantasy. Is... So specifically, what uh, what was your idea? Like, what did you conceptualize to write a book about when you attempted? Uh, well, the only altered reality story I wrote, to be honest, is one that was at that point more of a time wasted than any kind of attempt at something that would be publishable in the right. future. Because I did the thing where I just kind of used characters that already exist. Um, I always liked the idea of the Marvel multiverse. And so I did at some point write like a fan fiction, if you will, a set therein that involves uh, reality jumping. That's actually, I believe, the most recent thing I have written uh, in a like yeah. story mm-hmm. format. Have you ever thought about like, like setting your own stuff up, like creating your own universe? Uh, of course, you could yes. always just substitute characters, but... Um, I think the most interesting part would be like the whole thing, conceptualizing yeah. the whole thing. Um, my definitely my favorite thing there is the other. Th- I, as I said, there's two things that I'm mainly am fascinated by and like writing about, and the the other thing is just you know your somewhat typical fantasy setting, right. like the Tolkien esque high fantasy. Dragons, exactly. Dungeons, dragons, dragons and dungeons. Um, you know, your dwarves and elves and gnomes and half Other douchebags. You know, like the Warcraft universe, for example. Yeah. Something like that. Um, I have actually there done also somewhat recently within the last few years. I have made attempts at kind of constructing fantasy worlds in that regard. Partially for the idea of writing a story within them. Partially for potentially using them in D&D. Yeah. Because that makes sense. At the end of the day, I've never been good at... For the story thing, the problem for me always is... I don't like the whole, like, oh yeah, let's pre-plan an entire story arc and then, like, fill it out in depth. Like, the whole... They go from... Like, they have the whole thing, like, as a skeleton and then fill out the details. Mm -hmm. I like more an approach that I think is overall less popular because it works worse. We just keep just going from the start. Set up a starting point and write. Sure. Uh, naturally, you run into writer's block at some point and that is why I've never really gotten beyond chapter one on anything that I've written. All right. Um, are you still intending to continue on those? Or are you, if 
uh, if you were to to pick that up? Are you intending to start a new project? If I were to ever well write something with the intent to publish, first of all, which I've never really done specifically, I mostly do creative writing or did creative writing for my own sake, kind of. Um, I would probably try to actually, you know, do the whole world building and trying to figure out roughly the story points you want to hit right. and then actually writing from there because then there's a hope that it might actually get finished. I wouldn't mind. Like, the, generally the advice that people give out is to just publish whatever you do. could be the biggest pile of shit you think you've ever created, but um, the most important thing is to publish stuff, like if you're an artist. Yes. <laughs> or so I've heard. Uh, I'm not an artist. I mean, we live in a day and age where we can easily publish material that maybe isn't worth selling. Yeah. Just, you know, just for like, put it out there, you know, somewhere where there's a comment section, get your critiques, see what you can improve upon. Exactly. Uh, learn from the experience. I might do something like that in the future, like maybe some short stories or... Mm -hmm. Something along like some those Edgar lines. Edgar Allan Poe stuff. Just for more for the experience aspect than with any kind of intent to publish a book. Um, the same thing I said about uh, the bucket list item publish a book probably would end up more likely being an RPG product. Right. Like um, it could be a setting book potentially, sure. but just you know because a lot of the popular RPGs specifically have um, already systems in place where people can publish their third-party content for the system. Um, so that would be something that I would also be interested in doing that doesn't directly relate to writing itself. Uh, but that would be something I would definitely be interested in. And I think that I could also somewhat realistically see myself actually getting done. Alright. Um, Why not? I also kind of sort of want to publish my own RPG system as a matter of fact, but that's a bit more of a complicated yeah, thing. A because project. Most people that develop RPG systems end up doing the thing where it's like, oh, it's like this system, but. And if you're starting from that, I mean, they don't officially yeah. publish it as such, mm -hmm. but you can clearly tell that they started from a system that they yeah. like and they then took just made some changes. Which is fine. And that doesn't really justify its own standalone system. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to build from from. Like, from scratch, basically. Like, I had this one idea that uh, we could come up with a story or write a book together because we have very different styles in writing and uh, because mostly I'm not a writer at all. Um, but <laughs> make, That's a style, yeah, But combine whatever styles we would have scraped together from our heart of hearts and put that together, try to combine it in one, and hopefully it'll be glorious. Like, 99% chance it'll be absolutely <laughs> wretched. But 1% chance we'll, we'll create a masterpiece. How about that? How's that sound? Sure. Let's, I mean, let's do that. Let's write a short story about that stuff. Whatever you, whatever you want to write about, you give me the topic, and we 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 go get on that. I was about to say uh, the whole cooperative aspect there, of course, presumably only makes it harder because you kind of gotta make sure at the end of the day that everything fits. But it's definitely something that might be worth trying, especially if you're saying it for a shorter format, where. It's not like a huge project that then just ends up being like, oh yeah, hey, we spent like a year like on the side doing this thing that never ended mm -hmm. up being anything. Instead, it's like, oh yeah, like we spent a few afternoons on this, and maybe it's something, maybe it's not. Incorporate Sergey, maybe you got some ideas. Let's let's make it like you can make it like a fantasy universe, but it also plays in like 1842 South Carolina, and it's all about like farming and stuff. <laughs> and there's also dragons. But it's very realistic. I mean, grounded fantasy universes exist, and it's definitely a very interesting angle because oftentimes fantasy kind of gets lost in like their high concepts and magic and everything. And yeah, no magic. The idea of living in a fantastical universe but showing it from not the vantage point of, you know, the mighty hero who goes to slay the dragon, but rather from kind of like the day-to-day -day life of the regular townsfolk in there yeah. would definitely be something that, while not entirely unexplored, is definitely something that isn't as worn out of a concept as your generic, you know, hero's journey, fantasy universe kind of thing. It's got to be like a, a mixture of Huckleberry Finn and whatever, Dungeons and Dragons sort of thing. 
I, I kind of I can see this happening. I, t- I totally can. It seems very seems seems pretty cool. I don't know. We could we could definitely debate about that and, and potentially make that happen. But uh, I think we've debated enough today, uh, specifically about this. If you want JJ to publish his writings, then let us know in the comments of the Discord server. By the way, link to that in the description. I believe JJ pointed this out, but description of the video, Discord server, go join. Uh, the Discord server, because it's free for everyone, and then uh, we'd be happy to have you there and appreciate everyone showing up. That being said, drop a like on the video, and we're going to be out of here with the song of the week. So what is your song of the week? Oh, you want me to go first? <laughs> yes. How's that? And I just thought that... You might... feel, feel froggy today? Okay. My song of the week is a Flying Start by Mike Oldfield. Okay. That's my song of the week. My song of the week is Be My Baby by The Ronettes. I've never heard of that song. I believe that is correct. I believe I said that correctly. Is that a good song? Um, sure. I think the... the, the <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, I feel like the song... Like, from what I've heard, that song is very suspicious. Because this could be easily one of those that is, like, abjectly terrible. It could also be a, a, a classic of rock that, for some reason, I've never known. Well, it's... Because de- you do that sometimes. It's definitely a classic... Uh, well, not classic, classic. I mean, you know, in, in that time frame type of thing, I... It's not a very recent song by yeah. any means. Um, I remember both instances. Ross, not as much. I remember both instances having occurred before. Yes. Uh, where you name a song that just sounds like it's that sort of thing, and then it's either great or it's horrible. For example, like you used Surrender by Cheap Trick once. Yes. Which turns out to be fantastic, and then you use stuff like, that, was it called Cherry Pie or something? By Warrant, yes. Yeah. So, which is just absolutely terrible. Um, so I'm going to give this a try. I put it in the music show, JJ. I'm pretty sure I have, uh, like, half a year ago. What? Yes. Have you? Yes. Well, that means it's probably <laughs> uh, in that one category. But you can put it again, and I'm, uh, I'm going to give it another try. We'll see. So thank you to everyone out there for listening to this episode of Trash Talk Podcast. Yeah, y- y'all. Exactly. <laughs> Way too close. Appreciate it. Drop a like. We appreciate it is what I meant. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe. Appreciate the video. Do yeah, it. Appreciate our work. It's a, <laughs> we do a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, drop a like on the video, man. Subscribe to Trash Can TV and go join our Discord again. We're going to see you in the next one. Next week, obviously, we have Sergey on board talking about Life is Strange Before the Storm and some other hustles that we can come up with during the week. Uh, it's going to be a good one. So, JJ. That's it. That's it.